All right, Troy here from Quad Standard Labs, and we're going to talk about the FPV toolkit, so to speak. Uh, we've got quite a bit of our different offerings on the table here, and in order to kind of walk through um, each one and kind of just give some examples of when you might use which one and which type of flying or what type of video content capturing or what type of camera you're going to fly, uh, we wanted to just do a quick overview to kind of update where we are with what we actually offer uh, as a company for professionals to do this type of work. So uh, super exciting stuff. We really love talking about these things. Uh, we're going to start with the small stuff real quick and we've only got a couple of examples. Uh, we can do some more in-depth reviews of kind of what's going on with different versions of different platforms we offer uh, but we wanted to kind of focus on some center lifter and some heavier lift stuff before uh, and and so the the small stuff is kind of uh, a little bit more well known already and understood so here's what we have here we've got an open prop five inch and we've got what's considered a cine whoop both of these are showing that they can carry a gopro um, there are smaller offerings within the cine whoop um, that we can get smaller, a little more compact, uh, carrying naked heroes, things of those natures to hit smaller gaps. Uh, but this one is a hydroplane slash terraplane. It's developed with an 85 millimeter prop that was very similar to, or the exact same size as the geyser from Shin Drones. Uh, we worked with Andy to mold these props um, and the prop ducts uh, with HQ. They're a durable plastic. Uh, they can go on any frame you really want. They're meant to be super lightweight, so the platform itself is nice and light. Uh, there are some bigger, thicker, more durable options and ducts out there for different sizes. Uh, feel free to experiment with them, but we built these ducts with this frame with Andy on purpose. Uh, we really, really believe that this is a really great all-around contender for Cine Whooping. You can carry one hero, you can carry two heroes. We've got clients that put pool floats on them to make them float. Uh, we, we, we build them in hydroplane, which is the hydrophobe body, so it's a sealed body. Uh, we also build it in the terraplane, which is the open body, as Andy intended it. I've also got here, uh, it's actually the Shrout Law, which is kind of a custom build we do and only we offer. Uh, again, a frame designed by Andy Shin. Uh, this was actually designed for Area 51. Um, John Shrout actually had a lot of influence because he requested this specific kind of layout, which is a stretched and squished X long ways. Uh, this allows for a super lightweight frame. It's really one of the most lightweight builds we do with DJI especially. Um, and with a high KV five inch motor on 6S, this thing is doing 100, 120 miles an hour chasing things around with ease. Uh, it's a great, really, really lightweight platform. So flying GoPros, you know, most people are looking at either a Cine Whoop or you're looking at an open prop design. Cine Whoops are great for indoor and outdoor, depending on which one you buy. Uh, could be a little more geared towards one or the other, but there's plenty of them out there that um, are really all around contenders, kind of like the Terra Plane. Uh, the Squirt is another great one that can be indoors or outdoors, especially the 6S builds that we do. Uh, five inch. You're gonna want open props if you're out there in the air, you're trying to chase things, trying to change direction really fast, you're wanting to freestyle somewhat. Um, something like an open prop five inch is really what you wanna do. Um, there's also another drone kind of a size in between, a six or a seven inch really is what we do. Uh, seven inch X4s. Uh, for long range cruising, mountain flying, stuff like that, it's still kind of in the same category as a five inch. In fact, we can make you a five inch that cruises really nicely and has some mid to long range uh, capabilities. So that gets us kind of out of the GoPro world for the most part, except here's an example of a 10 inch. And this is really a kind of a custom build, uh, something that not a lot of people fly because it's kind of in between uh, the Cine lifters that are on the table here and a GoPro rig. This is technically all meant for a GoPro. Uh, it's a Project 399 by uh, Jordan Jet Timpkin. Um, it's a 10 inch version, so it's got beefy, really beefy arms. Um, you can make this into a really long range kind of cruiser, you know, really efficient build uh, carrying a GoPro, but you could also strap a cinema camera or a small camera to it, maybe a DSLR, a body like a, uh, you know, uh, A7, um, one of the G8, uh, the G8 S's, uh, G85 S's, I believe actually, sorry. 
uh, but all you know, Blackmagic Pocket 4K, there's lots of different small cameras that we can get uh, and we can put them on something like this. A 10 inch X4 is gonna carry a lot of weight if you really wanted to push it. So uh, you could probably actually fly a Komodo on something like this, I don't see why not. Uh, we actually do X4 lights of our thick, which is a seven inch. You can also run eight inch props on it. Uh, but we do do an X4 of this in a seven inch and it's basically a light Cinelifter. It'll carry 1300 grams, 1400 grams. We've even tested it above that. Uh, but a four, an X4 seven inch can really carry something pretty decent, which means a 10 inch is going to also. Uh, so this is just kind of a sitting here as that play setter for that seven inch X4, uh, what we consider Cinelifter lights or X4 Cinelifters. So pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, again, talk to us. This is more of a custom real solution than something that's tested and tried and true like a lot of these platforms from Andy that um, at this point have had years of experience working on them. So um, we're gonna bypass this guy here just for a second, even though we just talked about exports. And we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes here. So I'm gonna pull, couple of these off. So we've got a Sicario and a Thick, which are outfitted pretty similarly. Um, the difference between the two is this one here is going to be an 8 inch Cinelifter with 2812 motors. Uh, it's built pretty specifically to be 8 inch props. Uh, you can run a variety of 8 inch props on it. Uh, you could run 7 inch props, but the motors are really big stators and they really are meant to be you know, spinning that 8 inch prop. So uh, losing the, the prop size down a notch, you know, again, could work and some people kind of mix and match. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to be flown as an 8 inch. Uh, the difference between the frames and the thick are actually just what you see visually. We have a arching arm on the Sicario and the thick is a much more traditional X arm, just open, kind of almost a little bit dead cat. Um, and so both are X8s and both basically can be built with the exact same identical hardware, but they do have some slight difference in characteristics of flight and they have some nuances as to what you can mount on them. So it's really important, you know, the, the motor size and the prop size, this being a, a true seven inch with the uh, 1350s, uh, 2808s, and this one over here being a 2812, 1100. Um, the prop size difference is somewhat negligible. They do have performance differences. For example, the eight inch is gonna be much more torquey and powerful and have that grunt power. It's gonna have a lot of power in the power band, whereas the seven inch is gonna be a, a really, really agile, quick to accelerate, really nimble, um, fast to throw around kind of feel, whereas the eight inch starts to get a little more kind of heavy feeling, even though you've got enough power to carry whatever's on it. Um, so, you know, the two motor choices can be interchanged between the platforms. We build Sicarios in the 2808. We also build it in a 2810 that we're testing. And we're also building it in the 2812s. And then the same thing with the thick. We can put the same motor concept over here. Um, the only real difference, again, is going to be the COG, which is going to kind of change the feel of it. So on the Sicario, you can kind of see here, the props are a little more, like the motors are spread out further. So the footprint of the Sicario is slightly wider, but the camera sits lower in the body. Um, this allows for everything to be in the prop line, and when you're really throwing this thing around, you're gonna feel the difference between the two. This one with the battery underneath, the camera sitting on top, when you throw it around, it's gonna kind of feel like, like, like you're throwing that weight at the bottom around, whereas the Sicario is gonna feel a lot less of that kind of slinging feel. Um, that being said, the slinging feel is what some people need, especially if they're flying high speed and they're wanting to really throw it around and do like 180s and stuff like that. Um, the slinging kind of feel to it could, could help you with that. Uh, the other advantage to the thick is that really high uh, pitch that you can get the camera to and keep everything nicely centered in, in, in the, the actual battery and the camera centered on the frame. And again, it makes for a very interesting balance that some people like and some people don't. 
On the Sicario, we've got the battery mounted in the back and the camera in the front. So it is a little more of a balancing act and you use these uh, on the side, the bars, which have some little notches on the braces. Um, that allows you to kind of see the center of, of balance. If you hold it right there, like you can see it's balanced. If I have the camera and the battery on there, we're gonna balance it the same. Um, so it really does you know, depend on what you're trying to shoot. Uh, if you're wanting to shoot negative tilt, the Sicario is great for shooting that negative tilt. So going down hills, going chasing things that are moving downward motions. Um, these are the, that's what Sicario can do really, really well because of the negative tilt that you can add to those cameras, um, both the FPV and the HD. So now that we kind of see the difference between Sicario and Thick, um, you know, th there is a price difference at times for these. Um, there's a few things just to know, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Sicario, uh, when you add the case and everything, uh, and, and refresh all to it, uh, you get really close to the same price as a thick if you add the case and all the other things to it as well. Um, the difference is going to be how easy it is to get in and out and that really build a thick compared to a Sicario. A Sicario is a very high level build. Um, everything is self-contained inside the main body which holds all of the arms together. So if you have to get into this at any time, which we go into these machines two, three, four times before they go out the doors, uh, you have to take not only the camera plate off, but all of it, the entire thing comes apart and just falls kind of apart. So it's a, a longer process of building, testing, tuning, fixing, getting things right, making sure things are right. Um, as well as when we go to repair it. So all of our center lifters you can get refresh with. Refresh is a great service. It prioritizes you as a client when you have issues. We try to take care of you as soon and fast as possible. You have direct access to me and, and anybody else on our team if necessary uh, to get some problems resolved quickly. Uh, when you do have repairs or upgrades, ship it to us, your cost, we'll fix it, we'll bill you for the parts and the shipping back to you. We try to get these things in and out as fast as possible. If we can get it in and out the same day, we're gonna do it because we need to get it back on set or back in your hands to put it to work. Um, and that's what you pay for with that priority refresh. So. Uh, refresh is a great thing to have if you have any of our platforms, whether it be a Cine Whoop all the way up to one of these uh, Cine Lifters. So the next thing we want to look at is I'm going to go ahead and take the thick away. We're going to take a look at what this is. This is some of the same heritage, so to speak, from Sicario, uh, transferred over into a 10-inch build. This 10-inch build is actually 8S, and we can do it in 12S as well. Um, this platform is meant to do two things. Carry the same cinema camera as a Sicario can or a thick, but do it faster with more power and more efficiency, so longer running time, right? Comes at a cost. To get more efficient, we have to get bigger. So you can see here, it's a couple of inches wider all around. It's about, I'd say, four inches width-wise and four, front and back-wise uh, larger all the way around. So, bigger in some cases, people can't use. So a Sicario could be kind of the, the top end of where you need to go to be safe and not scare people and you know, be intimidating. Um, with the 10 inch, again, we can get more power, um, so we can get to higher speeds, we can carry more weight also. So if we're talking a one-to-one -one comparison of cinema camera that was carried here and moving it here, you're gonna almost double your flight time. We're going to go from three to five minutes here to seven to ten minutes, prefer, probably here. Um, and that's going to be dependent on your voltage, dependent on your flight style, and dependent on the actual total weight. We're looking at being able to carry over here about 3,000 grams total between the battery and the camera. And honestly, you want to probably be at about 2,500 to be really nicely weighted on this. Over here, we can carry 3,000 grams of payload on the camera and another 1,000 grams of battery. So 4,000 grams we can get in the air total between the battery and the camera. So balancing the, the camera weight and getting kind of to the best efficiency, it's really at home and probably best around 3,000 grams. So a Komodo plus a really nice size 8S battery or two, two 6S's on the 12S version 
and you're going to be sitting at easily seven to ten minutes of flight time. Um, it's it's a really great platform for any of these bigger platform or bigger cameras. Uh, you're wanting to add live streaming or just other things like focus wheels. Uh, you could get all of that stuff on a platform like this. So uh, this is called Swol S W O L. Uh, and again, it's kind of the next generation step from everything that Andy learned about Sicario, uh, from not having arm braces to having arm braces to having a second set of arm braces in the middle. Um, lots of different things were learned from kind of this, this iteration and scaling it. So uh, individual ESCs, by the way, APD, uh, big 3115 motors. Uh, again, depending on which voltage you pick would, would be dependent on which KV. So Swole is a really, really awesome thing. And I'm really excited that this guy is actually, you know, ready to start shipping. And we've got a couple of them in the works and you'll see more of those coming soon. All right. So we now are going to look at... The thick and the X4 ducted thick. So uh, we don't have a mount on this thick right here, the ducted one right now, but it would run the exact same universal camera mount. We wanted to talk about this platform because we've had another large Cinewhoop that we've been doing called Insider. Insider is a great platform because it gets the job done. When you need something to fly around people that's compact, can carry a Komodo, and can just get the shot that you need, uh, Insider is going to do it. Uh, the problem with Insider is it's not the best platform effective wise because it can't fly very long and we really push the hardware to its limits. Uh, so we've been trying with Andy to come to different solutions and we've had some different ones. People have seen something similar to this but based on the Sicario called Finster. Uh, we have one over here, not messing with that today. Uh, we're not messing with it anymore. Unfortunately, the Sicario frame just doesn't translate very well uh, to this ducted arena because of some vibration and also because it's a little heavier than a thick. Remember, um, the Sicario is definitely a much more robust build. Uh, the thick is a much more minimalistic and very kind of lightweight build. So uh, that being said, it makes for a great platform to put the same ducts, which are five inch ducts, these are also molded by HQ, by Andy directly from him. Um, they run again a five inch standard bullnose prop or a prop that Andy's been working with uh, the guys at, at HQ on, which is a six bladed five inch prop. You might've seen it, it's purple. Um, so you can run a couple of different prop varieties. We're finding the bullnose to be best actually. And we've been doing a lot of testing with motors and we still have some variations to go. Uh, but we are really, really excited about this platform replacing pretty much any full frame Cine look for a cinema camera payload or for a Cine lifter. Um, it really is much more stable. It's a little wider than Insider, which I know some people want a little bit tighter of a platform. But if you're wanting to get the shots and be able to fly for five minutes almost, if not more sometimes, um, this is definitely going to be the one. Uh, it's also got a much lower kind of profile uh, than some of the other, like even the, the Insider and definitely the Sicario ducted. It's got a much lower profile. Um, it also allows the air and stuff to kind of get around the props a little bit better than something like the Insider, where again, when you're pushing through wind or air really fast, it kind of catches a lot. So it's going to be a little more stable and, and I think it's going to be a much better performing platform. So. Uh, Cine lifting for indoor work or for around people wanting to carry that same payload of a cinema camera, be Komodo, BGH1, Blackmagic Pocket, whatever, um, we can build you one of these guys. Uh, and it's an X4, runs about a 4,000 milliamp 6S battery. We could push that to 5,000 milliamps if you've got a lighter payload. Uh, and it's really just going to be a lot of fun to see what folks shoot with that. So. That's the look at the uh, FPV toolbox, so to speak, from Quad Standard Labs. It's not everything we build. Please go to our website, check us out. Um, follow us on Instagram, follow us on YouTube. We try to post stuff everywhere we can, Facebook. Um, but more importantly, if there's ever a professional solution you're looking for, um, whether we have it or it's something else, we love talking to people about what they're doing, what they're shooting, and how to get the shots they need. Uh, so please contact us, uh, quadstandardlabs.com. 
click on a couple of the, the different boxes and areas that you can contact us from there. You can schedule a call or just send us an email. Uh, we look forward to it. Fly safe, fly smart, just fly. Peace.